Today's project is aided and abetted by Iced Coffee Milk Stout from Good Neighbor Brewing Company in Winnipeg. The tasting notes on the label call out coffee, chocolate, and vanilla flavors. And they brewed it with milk, sugar, cacao, nibs, Tahitian vanilla, and coffee roasted at Little Sister Coffee Maker right here in Winnipeg. Do you remember this camera arm mover thing that I built several months ago and then rebuilt a few months after that? Well, I'm going to take a third stab at it. Well, let me get it down and uh, show you what's going on here. So how this is intended to work is I'm, I mount my uh, knockoff GoPro on it. The whole thing mounts up there above the workbench. And then when it's turned on, it's supposed to swing back and forth, hit the... Uh, little micro switches for reversing switches and just go back and forth but a couple of problems with this one well beyond the belt it's moving too fast but that's the slowest I can get that motor to go and it's a little bit noisy on the motor when it's hanging the way up it's supposed to be like this the motor doesn't slip on the belts but it is still too noisy when it's mounted i can hear feel the vibrations and hear the vibrations in the camera so that's no good the original version had a stepper motor driver like this being pulsed by a 555 so i could run it at whatever speed i wanted to but that was too jerky and it just wasn't working properly so ken reached out to me and sent me this product that he manufactures which is called a silent control board stepper motor driver. So I'm going to take that and a stepper motor and a 3D printed mount that I had in version one of this thing and see if I can get that to do it smoothly, quietly and slowly so that I can actually use this camera to have just a second angle from directly above the workbench um, that is slowly almost imperceptibly, but constantly moving so that uh, I can give you guys a variety of angles without having to put in a lot of extra effort when I'm recording. Because every extra bit of effort I have to put in with, while I'm recording means that I'm dividing my attention and uh, frankly not doing as good a job as I should be doing on these videos. So he Ken has designed this thing to be a standalone controller for a peristaltic pump powered by a stepper motor and it can run apparently between 0.1 and 400 rpm on the motor and then with my gearing i should be able to slow that down even more running from that small gear up to this larger gear so hopefully i can get some really smooth really slow movement out of it and uh, get some camera uh, moves that are you know usable there is the specs on it. It can do, you know, NEMA 8, 11, 14, 17, 23, 34, up to 3 amps. It's in a PLA printed case. Pretty nice print, actually, too. A little bit of dual color action. I think he's using a single color printer and just doing a filament swap. Even the knob for the rotary encoder is 3D printed in two different colors. And yeah, it looks like it was printed that way up and he just did a filament swap half a dozen layers from the end. Nice printing technique to get you dual color in a single extruder machine. So this takes up to 24 volts in it, up to three amps. There is your two uh, connections to the motor, two coils to the motor. Both sets of connections are on removable plugs, which is a really nice thing to have. Nice, nicely done. The other thing he included in the package, and I don't know if this is what comes with it when it goes to normal people or normal customers or not, but he said I could show you guys, is a schematic. So other than the switches and rotary encoder and power supply and whatnot, there's basically two main devices in there. This one is the stepper driver, which is a TMC 5160. And this one, I believe, is an Arduino Nano. We'll pop the lid and take a look inside just to take just to see. So on the bottom of this thing, there are four screws in recessed holes that are not hidden underneath the feet, making it a little bit easier to get into. And as I said, he did tell me that I'm allowed to show you guys what's in here, so I'm not breaking any trade secrets or anything. So we have on a custom circuit board, we have an Arduino Nano, as I suspected. We have a stepper driver, um, capacitor some diodes down there, potentiometer there, 
And a few breakout pins and whatnot over here. Cool. Might as well pull the board right out and just take a closer look at it. I'm obviously not going to completely reverse engineer it because I don't have to because he's included the schematic. But let's just see what's on here. On the back side we have a 4 pin with uh, I squared C going up to the display which is just clipped in up there. And a couple of button caps that we need to put back in in the proper place. You know, threaded inserts into the 3D print, standard heat set inserts. Oh that's cool, those little name plates on the front there are separate items that just seem to drop in. Oh that's clever. Also, this little nameplate on the side here is separate as well. So he was able to print the uh, that little insert, which is good on the back, in the correct orientation for doing the filament swap. Oh, wow. He's put a lot of thought into this. I'm impressed at this design. Though it occurs to me, before I put it back together, I should find the direction change button and figure out how to wire that out just because I'm going to need direction change connected to these limit switches up here. And direction change over here is pin 10 which is 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, D7 or GPA 07. However conveniently he has left a set of pads over here with the direction and a ground labeled so I should just be able to solder onto those and run a wire out. Very handy. And, hmm, I could run the wires just out through there. I could run them out through the programming slot because I don't suppose I'm going to reprogram them. Yeah, I think I'll run it out there. This should be fairly straightforward. And for strain relief, I've just wrapped it around the outside of those pillars. And then when the lid clamps onto there, it will trap it in place and... My wire won't be yoinking on the uh, on the solder joints. I feel pretty good about that, you know. Don't often think about that sort of niceties until much later in the process. Before I get too carried away, I think I am just going to dry test this thing out on the workbench, just to uh, to make sure everything works. I think I will use the itty bitty teeny weeny screwdriver that he sent along with it. I mean, it's not much of a screwdriver, but I do appreciate it when a manufacturer goes to the effort of giving you the tools that you need. I'm going to use 12-ish volts. Got a current limit for an amp and a half, but I'm probably not going to hit that. Let's power this on and see what happens. Drawing about 30 milliamps. And there we have a display on it. It's not flickering in real life. Of course, that's just camera artifacts. Well, let's just see what happens when we push the on button. Oh, it is, is already on. Okay. I'm just going to crank the camera setting for a minute so you can actually see it. So when we push the on off button, it does that. It turns it on and off. When we push the direction button, it does that. And when I splash my two direction wires together, it does that as well. And when I adjust the rotary encoder, you can see the RPM changing. So we'll turn the speed up from zero. There's three RPM. Nice. And I hit the direction button and it goes the other way as expected. I push the power button. It's just a stop button really. And that stops it. Reverse it. Keeps going in the same direction. And then apparently if you push the rotary encoder it zooms to a... I don't know how far ahead. Looks like a rotation and a half or something like that. Okay. Oh yeah, and where's my where's my wires here? If I make this switch happen, it does reverse. Excellent. That's everything I want in it. So now all that's left is the mechanical stuff, which is going to be mostly a repeat of the first video, which I will put a link to up there, but I am going to work on it anyway. Um, that video will have the detail of the various 3D printed pieces that I've got here and everything else, so... I will uh, rush ahead a little bit, I think, and just work on this mechanical mounting. And I'll show you bits and pieces of it along the way, I guess. But uh, like I said, it's covered in that other video. So 
I won't give you 100% of every boring little detail. This is the exact situation where it would be nice to have the second camera angle just for things that should be time-lapsed or speeding ahead and stuff like that. clear how I'm going to mount this box so I think my first experiment is going to be a bit of velcro held on with some VHB tape if that doesn't work I will have to uh, come up with some more elegant solutions like duct tape or zip ties or something but we'll start with this and see if that will actually do the job so before I mount it up to its position I'm going to put this limit switch on over here which is just physically as far as it's capable of going. But I can't put the other one on until I get it up there because I don't know exactly where it goes to sort of limit the thing to a reasonable distance. Now the most unpleasant part of this is the physically mounting it up there just because it's a really awkward place to get at. That one is there, so that's fine. I think the other one will go approximately wherever that lands. So I'm kind of holding that there. That puts this there-ish. And ish is close enough for this really. I'm not too concerned about that level of precision. Well, I am concerned about where I lost my screw here. So with, the, with that tightened up, I can get to this awkward process up here. And excuse me if I don't film it. So now about all that's left to do after that's awkwardly mounted up there. Plug the uh, servo in. That's not a servo, that's a stepper. Uh, plug the stepper in and plug in a random 12 volt power supply that I've got kicking around. And hopefully that should hold up to the Velcro that I got up there. That's cool. Now then, let's plug it in and see what happens. Um, I can't read that. It's on, it's... Oh, it is going really slow, okay. Turn it down to about one and a half RPM. Stick that back up there. And I think you can see it moving. Yeah, you can. That's not bad. Slow that down a little bit. Yeah, that's the kind of slow motion I wanted. Hmm. And why is that switch not reversing it properly? I got a wire broken somewhere. Damn it, this is going to be awkward. Well, there's your problem. These switches need to be both set up the same because now they're both normally open. In the previous configuration, one was normally open and one was normally closed. Fortunately, this is a fairly straightforward um, change to make. Should have tested this before I put it up into the awkward position. But so be it. We're here now. And that works. Cool. Contortion time begins again. Okay, there it's back up again. Hopefully the switches are adjusted properly. I've got it running a little bit faster than I normally want to. Right hand switch is operating. Beautiful. Okay, so now I've got it slowed down to its lowest speed, 0.1 RPM. And it is moving imperceptibly slow, which is what I wanted. 
So hopefully in future when I'm working on stuff down here in my workbench, I can have it slowly orbiting around up there as I wanted it to do in the first place and the footage won't be too jerky. I'm hoping that it is and I hope that uh, Ken's controller that he sent me does the job for me. Thank you very much, sir, for sending that in. Sorry, it took so long to get around to actually implementing this, but I wanted to make sure that I understood what was going on and I wanted to give myself enough time to actually do it. So thanks for sending that in and for everybody watching. Thank you so much for watching. Questions and comments down below as usual. I'll talk to you later.